And they can have my things when we're dead But we gonna live forever The Boys Cast. We are here. I slept two hours because what happened was I was in a dream. Yeah. And I was in a pool or something like that, right? A pool or a lake or something like that. It's a little, uh, it's a little wishy washy. And then I started drowning. Oh yeah. So that's, I was. You think that's a, that's a, some sort of symbolism? Well, <laughs> it's it's it, it gets weirder. So I started drowning, and I was in the dream, being like, "Oh, help, whatever." And then I woke up. And I was coughing like crazy because I think what actually happened is that I sw- I swallowed a bunch of my spit down the wrong tube. <laughs> and then my brain... That's like literally something like a 90-year-old does. Well, the crazy... Yeah, so that's the first crazy part is that my body's just given up on how to you know deal with my spit. But the even crazier part <laughs> yeah. to me is... Well, maybe not crazy, but it's kind of funny. I guess it's one of those things where you're peeing in real life and then you think you're peeing in the dream or something. But in this one, my my all my spit went into my tube, so I started coughing like crazy. And instead of waking up in the dream, I was just drowning. Yeah, yeah the dream just goes. Yeah, we'll just kill you in the dream. Isn't that crazy that I just stuck in the dream world? Yeah. So it's I good. wonder if that's how it happens. You know when what? People die in real life. You just die in your dream, and they also kick you out of the real life. <laughs> I like feel like your body would not allow that. You still have like some sort of trigger at some point where it goes, yo, yo, like your body kind of kicks in. You go like, no, we're dying in real life. Took let's, you long enough. Yeah, yeah. Let's snap them out. My of body it. was flipping out. Out. You, can, you can tell you've been watching like more chick shows and not like conspiracy stuff because a conspiracy <laughs> guy would have been at Guantanamo getting waterboarded. <laughs> you would have been like, I don't know anything. And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> but you've been watching all these chick I shows. I will never so tell you my <laughs> secret formula for writing jokes. <laughs> never. You'll never get the cheese dream recipe from me. <laughs> You can fry it out of my cold dead hand. <laughs> my dad's there in the other thing. Like, don't he's getting waterboarded in the other yeah. cell. Don't do it. We look would hold hands one last time before yeah. we die. Long. Some dude walks in with like fucking like you know like this the battery with the things and he has like a loaf of bread and a cheese. <laughs> Some wieners and he goes, wieners, he goes what's it gonna be and they're all yeah they have all these messed up ones they have one with, <laughs> they tried to put the wiener on top of the bread turned into a hot dog yeah like the scientist comes in he's like i don't know i can't do it he can't crack it he goes, you tried every permutation <laughs> well lots going on right now Canada, they're freezing bank accounts. The blue Ugh. checks are cheering it on. Russia is about to go. The the media and the blue check squadron cannot. They, the squadron. They, the okay. bottom line is they just fucking love the government. I know. There's I was saying the COVID, the COVID hysterics are kind of just yelling into the void right now because there's all this new shit. They're yelling into the void and then a lot of them are becoming war guys whereas anyone's like, hey, this isn't bad. They're like, what do you fucking love Russia? Yeah. Why don't you suck off Putin if you don't think <laughs> we should be at war? Also, the Canadian government's great. They should take more <laughs> bank accounts. I saw one of the posts and it was kind of like, you know, this woman didn't get bail or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And you just have a bunch of people with like defund the police in their bile being like, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah fucking- do you see that too? They <laughs> anything, they're sending funds to the prosecutors they so the reason why they wouldn't let her out is because they go she's a risk to re-offend yeah we're gonna go protest again like what she's gonna go organize another convoy (laughs) like she gets out and the first thing the best though was to was she like in court she goes yeah because they go you have to leave they're kicking people out of ontario like that's their punishment which is like they banish them yeah they're which is not the worst but they're not from because they're not from ontario so they go go back to alberta or whatever and uh so but for that chick they're like you got to leave ontario and she's like well i'm not vaccinated and i you froze all my bank accounts <laughs> right so, so she's like so she's like it's kind of hard for me to get out of here like i can't even get on a bus yeah yeah plus yeah. i don't even have any money <laughs> um and, th- and then they're just like we're just not letting you out so worse news than that all of the high value men have been destroyed they're gone woman destroys high value men yeah i felt myself disintegrating that's probably how, why i drowned how many, how, do, do, do we have no patrons left <laughs> the pa- the, we, we go for the Patreon, just zero people. Oh, this girl is, you know, this is what she has to say. Where are the low value men? Like, what are what are all the low value men up to during these trying times? Because the high value men, they, I know they're around. They won't shut the fuck up. Low value men, I have not heard a word out of. So this girl's a big low value male fan. Yeah, she's she's loving the low value men. What's this in response to? Basically, her, her the gist of this thing yeah. is she goes, 
men shouldn't fucking talk ever. Okay. And so she's, her kind of thing is that low high value. value yeah, yeah. Low, low value men shut up and listen. But doesn't that automatically now make them high value? Like, is this not some sort of opposite scenario? Well, her thing doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but she's not done. But, okay, we'll say a little more. I think I want one of those. I want a low value man. They don't make podcasts. I haven't seen one low value There's man. There's a kink in her theory. <laughs> Do they not know how to use microphones? Maybe that's a good thing. That's Okay, so she doesn't like the fact that high value men have podcasts. Yeah. Now, here's a little uh piece of information that she might not be aware of. You're not allowed to listen to this podcast. No. You will be shocked. You will be actually banished from Ontario as well. <laughs> that's a new that's a new no regulation bank that we put. And guess what? I didn't want to have to do this, but your low value boyfriend banned also. <laughs> he's probably like a chatty dude and he sees her TikTok blow up and he's just like, This is a fuck? dude zone, your high value boyfriend's podcast. No one's allowed, the, the girls aren't allowed to listen to that either. I love she goes, Where are the low value male men or whatever? I'm like, Why don't you uh, put on a real tight shirt and go walk past a construction site? Yeah. And, like, and by <laughs> the way, we love the low value yeah, men, so there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing. No, but we, not we don't pit, differentiate. They're not going to pit the high value males and the low value males against each other. Yeah. And that's what she's been up to right now. You don't now. see a lot of people coming out in favor of the low. Because here's. I but mean, she's only. She's using them as a crutch the same way that people go. Oh, you know, I'm supporting minorities. What is your policy? Well, just it's fuck you, sort of. Yeah, yeah, oh, what did you do to help them? Nothing. You oh, know what I, I mean? There was a good quote in a movie that I saw. They go, you think you can come around here and just offer all your help? Well, you don't realize you ain't not got no help to give. <laughs> That's all these people. You ain't got not. You no. ain't got not no help to give. Did you pause the movie to write that down? No, but okay. I made a mental note of okay. it. That's good. And... So she thinks the other thing is she goes, oh, the low value males, they don't have podcasts. They just shut up. I got news for you. No, they don't. <laughs> they definitely, I mean, the, the, when she goes, the low value males do not have podcasts. I'm like, everybody. You has. have a podcast called low I, value male. I mean. That's a bit when, of a news to her. I mean, I'm honestly, I was literally last night uploading the podcast and I was like, I need an intro for the podcast because I just started. This is it. This is it. Yes. This will be my intro. Loud and proud, low value and high value. <laughs> now, listen, I think the low value men that they're going to be, she's going to be out there looking for low value men, allegedly. This is what she says. That's hot. All right. So, I haven't seen, I've never seen a man use a microphone for good. Might as well just not even know how to operate one. You know what I mean? They have to have oh! hair. They have to. Somebody has to be keeping these goddamn barbers in business. Barbers. And we all know it's not. Yeah. So low value men, I'm on your side. Um, and just like justice for the low. If you're a low value justice. man, if you're you. a low value male that ends up shacking up with this one, oh. you gotta, you gotta really feed it to her. You get to her house, <laughs> wash your socks in her sink, make food, leave the dishes everywhere, oh, yeah. piss in her bed. Oh, just, oh, I, I mean, thought all you liked the, the low value males. Then when she talks, you go, then she goes, why, why are you washing your boxers in my sink? You go. Thought you didn't want me to talk. Catch up on everything. <laughs> catch up on everything and a glass of milk with everything. And a glass of water and put ketchup in it and then yeah, give it to yeah, her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You go, is this a strawberry milk? You go, one better. <laughs> is this low value this enough ketchup for Ketchup milk. Trying to destroy us. Trying to pit the bros against each other. I don't even know other. what she's, her point. She goes, nobody's ever used. Her no, point. No high value male has ever used a fucking microphone. Her point is that guys uh, that are have opinions She's conflating that with yeah. high value men. She's like, basically the gist of her argument is like, <laughs> men shouldn't have a fucking opinion. <laughs> now, now, does she think, she obviously thinks she's high value. That's she a, that's a low value. She herself very high that's value. a low value woman. But they've right been there. coming after everyone, all the values, males. I know. Rogan's podcast is on. It's, a, it's, an, it's an on again, off again. Spotify. That was, that was weird. That's a conspiracy. That is a real conspiracy. And that's a conspiracy right that I'm on. So, but it's oh, by the way, apparently like the Stelter video, yeah, yeah. Birdie told me. Oh, really? Nice. <laughs> but yeah, to protest the fact that they're attacking that podcast and taking it on and off the air, I will be releasing my special on youtube.com slash Ryan Long Comedy March 7th. And if you want to fight back against the censorship, you want to fight back against the big totalitarian government. Yeah. Show these authoritarian totalitarians. <laughs> Can you say totalitarian again? Show these totalitarian uh, authoritarians. I like, you, I like how you said it before. 
totalitarian. That they don't have, you know, that they don't own you. They don't own your brain. Stick it to them by sharing my special with everyone you know on March 7th. Don't let the bad guys win. No. Don't no. let Justin Trudeau. Justin Trudeau. They hate our freedom. This is very special. much Osama bin Laden. They hate our freedom. Business. They, they do, literally hate our freedom. They hate our freedom. They don't. The bad guys don't want you to listen to our spe- my special. No. They no. don't want that. They absolutely now, don't. Now, back to original programming. Good question. If you're a cigarette smoker mm-hmm. and you lose, uh, you get a, one of the neck things, right? You have to breathe through a hole. Yeah. And you have one of those things to talk. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. Like, Do you, you like use it South during Park? sex? <laughs> I mean, better question is, do you have sex? Yeah, because what if, well, you might just have your old wife, you know what I mean? Stick with the old wife. I, you're, probably not getting some, you're probably not getting that much, that much new tank. No, you're not getting... Well, oh, uh, yeah, that's a question. Like, do you only, is it one of those things like herpy dating? Where Call you me only, daddy. But it's you only get <laughs> not girls girl who have the thing. The thing is, I <laughs> feel like, of you I feel it. like you kind of, I, I don't know, I could be wrong, but I feel like once you have that thing in, like, you're probably not even having a ton of energy. Call me daddy bot 3000. I, I feel like you lose your sex drive. If you ejaculation uh, <laughs> sequence. <laughs> oh, you think you go full robot or you go, I mean, no, that's just how it def- sounds. You definitely have fun with it. You got to have fun with it. About I'm cooming. <laughs> <laughs> well, or do you just have to, no, you only smashing girls who have that too. You, th- <laughs> you think that do they even, I feel like that's tracheotomy that, dating hole service. Yeah. Uh, do people even have that anymore? Drake date. They'd call that. I've, I've, have you ever seen one of those in person? I've seen one once. But uh, not, I think I did. Not once. for like 20, I think it was a woman. 20 years. Do you like that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do. You are a dirty whore. <laughs> So that's a that's that that's is the that big is question. Um, that is an interesting one. My answer is I'm going to say they they're not smashing at all. There's no smashing because they just don't have the energy for it. I think the guy is smashing, dude. His days are numbered. He needs to get the piece wet. Yeah, maybe. No, that's that's a dark fucking existence. I went though. to see the movie Strawberry uh, Mansion, right? And it's very it's this hipster movie, and the whole thing is basically it's one of those movies where. It's kind of, if you watch it on acid, it's probably cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. And there's all these weird costumes and the things very kind of doesn't make sense. And there's all these weird dimensions and stuff like that. Right. And I even called it when I was watching and I go, I bet the, I bet you that main guy that is the director. And I could tell it was almost, you could tell that the it director was, made himself the star too. Yeah. And I could tell star, that star, like literal star, literal star. And I called that too, from a mile away. I could tell that there was a pretentious air to it. And the guy was a pretty good actor, but the only thing that I realized about being a good actor is just do nothing. So he just made no facial movements. And the less you move, the better you are at acting. But the point I was going to make... I do, sorry to cut you off, but I do remember a Clint Eastwood acting tip when it said never blink. Don't blink. Yeah, I remember yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, And it's like, he honestly, if you watch his shit, he just like doesn't blink. That's just how stupid acting is, right? It, you know, yeah, you got to get these little... All the tips are just like, don't move, don't blink, don't do anything. Unless you're acting, you know, you're playing some zany role. It really is just do nothing and you'll be okay at it, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But except was, for uh, Joaquin Phoenix and the Joker, he was like, well, there is stuff he did with actors, his bo- weird stuff with his body. Sure, was like, cool. But there was it was basically you know uh, a hipster film or whatever, right? So it's all people that kind of look like me or whatever at the theater, and the theater was a hipster theater that played it, right? And. It, I've made this point How many before, times did you get shushed? But it blows my... Well, I walked out. Was, oh, I, oh, really? I yeah, I couldn't do a it. A walkout? No, I walked wow. out. And I had to convince because I was sort of... I got to go. And she was like, no, nah, I don't want to... I, I want to watch it. No, I've, I've walked out of, I think, two movies in my life. No, I'm, I walk out. One of them was Master of Disguise. It was I was just not in the mood for this nonsense. It was yeah, it was, yeah. it was was ridiculous, right? But <laughs> Master of Disguise... That, I was like 13. I was like, this is... <laughs> Arguably the biggest piece of shit I've <laughs> ever seen. It was, didn't look good. I remember this was so <laughs> insane. Yeah, it didn't look good. I was 20 minutes in. I got nah, I got to pull the plug on this. Uh, so one. New York's basically back to normal, except for this theater. It felt like the first day of COVID, honest to God. You know, they're bugging you about the masks. Like, okay. you have to show uh, the vaccines and stuff like that. And then the the people and the people going to the movie are, oh, uh, so what's the scenario with the masks? And the guy goes, you know, just t- t- take it off during six if you feel uncomfortable and it's just it constantly blows my mind Insane. how the you know the the wild you know uh drug addict punk people became the like Super grandmothers safe. yeah and it just always you know blows my mind you know 
Well, I guess what happens is when you're the counterculture and then you find yourself as part of the main culture at some point and then either you pivot back to being the counterculture and change. Yeah, and then now... you just get stuck. And, the, stuck and now even this, like the CDC and all these That's places... That's fucking insane. ...saying wild things like, oh... Uh, we don't want to release the new data because we don't want to make uh, <laughs> make it look bad. You know what I mean? Yeah. They were, they basically said that it could be misinterpreted by anti vaxxers This new data that kind of you know uh, doesn't ha- say misinterpreted them. how? Well, <laughs> I, know, I know how. I they know mean how. used. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I like how they say misinterpreted. It, well, yeah, in, interpreted right. Interpret, yeah. So. But it, it, was this a like an indie theater? Yeah, that's why, dude. Honestly, on my way over here, so I normally go to that place, uh, the coffee shop, uh, like on Think Coffee or whatever. That's where I always go on my way to the studio. And because it's warm out, I didn't bring my jacket. I didn't have a mask, and they're like so strict on that shit. Yeah, that I was like walking over there. Oh, I forgot a mask. I'm like, I can't. And I'm like, it's we're two over two years into the shit. I'm like, I can't go maskless to grab a coffee and leave. No, it's it, and it really is the what would consider to be the hip but the, I'll tell you what happened is anyone that was actually the type of person that started that counterculture all the essentially the leaders of that movement have all left and only the followers are left so that's how you end up with sort of movements of followers because there's all these sort of entrepreneurial people so to speak yeah. that start these you know cultures and subcultures and then i mean i can speak to myself every person that i know who was you know the uh, important people in these kind of subcultures have all kind of abandoned them mm-hmm. because they became ridiculous, right? Yeah, for sure. So it's And funny. a lot of these people are still kind of just pushing against, like, as crazy as it sounds, but just like the Trump stuff where they go, Trump people are no mask people. I'm not a Trump person. But that's because so I'm a mask person. But that is, it a, is, their side. is that not a cardinal component of someone who doesn't think for themselves? 100%. It's yeah. fucking insane. So you end up with all these people that uh, had a, you know, they they joined a thing that was kind of like a rebel, you know, rebellious thing. But it just, it's wild to see over and over again. Even just, you know, like I said, when you look around the subway and you go, who has their masks on? Joe Blow doesn't, but, you know, done to the nines. Of course. You know, image of like, I'm a wild boy. For sure. He's his got mask, fucking, he's a wild you know, mask boy. Got it is crazy, actually. <laughs> I went into Trader Joe's and because yeah, they do. kind of just abandoned the mask thing without really making a big stink about that's it. That's good for them. Yeah. That's in New what York. You should no, do. no, but in New York, like they didn't make a whole, uh, not, I, I missed it because I had to go Google, like, is there a still a mask man? And I remember I went into Trader Joe's like a week ago after, I, and I go in, in your there. Lard. Still 90% of people wearing masks. Even though you don't have to. Even though you don't have to. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, we're, it's you know nobody knows anybody who's like really got sick no it's it's insane and everybody got the last one pretty much and so what i would like to bring us to right now is accidentally four boys accidentally four boys there's a pretty good accidentally four boys but the re- <laughs> it's the original accidentally yeah this four is boys. the classic accidentally four <laughs> yeah. boys so a proposal will allow women to go topless in nantucket beaches and you know this is making waves out there oh, yes. and the woman said in order to promote equality for all persons and any person shall allowed to be topless on the public or private beach within the town of nantucket the amendment reads and she said i'm not saying that everyone has to go topless i am uh stover continued i'm saying well uh, what she did was then continue this article to say i'm not saying everyone has to go topless (laughs) only the fit ones (laughs) you know what's funny because people who kind of it it, it is a bit of a the original accidentally yeah but it's like because a lot of people who are against this will will kind of casually be like oh it's always the gross ones but it's not true it's actually not the gross ones who go topless it there is some gross ones there are some you'll always get those for sure well that's but over on net net definitely for the boys because we're asking for an accidentally for the boys i've seen some nice sets when i was out there oh big time but uh, yeah you're right see that this would be on purpose for the boys if they said you know we're going to allow women to be topless in the name of equality. Obviously, no saddlebags. No sa- the thing you really need to avoid is the actual nude beaches. Okay. Those you need to avoid because those are those where you're are get, that's where you get in the demons and the gargoyles. You get the girl that she's walking and her boobs are dragging on the sand. Well, you're just getting <laughs> all 60-year-olds and up. And you get a lot of flaccid dicks like in the gay community. You get a lot of like 80-year-old gay dudes. It's a big gay dude. Thing I mean, I guess it's preferable to hard dicks. I guess. By the way, you probably get. I wonder if you get kicked. Have off you watched you have the, I, 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 the nude have, beach? Have you watched the show Euphoria at all? Yeah, 
it's just nonstop dicks. It's crazy. This is what you said, but I've seen a few episodes and I've it's dude didn't ever see a single dick, but it might be a see what you want to see situation. Well, it's I mean, maybe you just have you're so you're so uh, straight that you're bu- I don't even see you them. just automatically just you can't see my, you can't see a penis. my 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 uh, brain just like paints them out. Yeah, yeah, just totally just like it's just and there's you know, no, and, uh, no vaginas, tons you know, of dicks. Yeah, like in the Matrix where you just hard see like a too. black spot and you go, I don't know what that is. Dude, That's what my body hard does. Hard dicks. There's a scene. That's what, allegedly, I haven't no, seen I'm t- them. No, t- look, anybody who's, who's watching this, there's a scene in the fucking Gaslight first- Gaslight Danny and for, say there was no dicks. First season where this chick's doing like an OnlyFans thing and this guy's like a pay pig. And it's literally this guy jerking off. Yeah. He's this big fat guy. It's like a TV show. So you're sitting there with your chick watching a dude jack off. Literally this gross fat old guy who's just like And they he's show like, his and dick. he's like he's like tell me how small my dick is and he's just Is jer- the dick small? Yeah. Nice. But you're like there's another scene cuz she keeps sending me fucking she's like look how many dicks there are. My fucking whole text message. Why is she sending you them? Cuz it's so you, insane. Maybe you should try having one. <laughs> <laughs> See, this guy's got one. It's so insane that she's like, this is crazy. And then there was like another one where this guy, and like heart, multiple erect penises. I My takeaway was that, you know, it was just funny that they're, they're I guess 90210 and shows like that were doing this forever where they had, you know, 95 year olds playing, you know, 16 year olds. Yeah. But this one, they have, you know, pretty steadily like 17 year olds and they just, they make them act like these wild sort of 25 year olds. Well, it's kids as essentially. Opposed to no, 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 no. They're, no, they're, they are teenagers. They play teenagers in the show. I know that. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying is, you know, they're, I, they're not 40 or they're even not, the they're wildest not like the school. Uh, this was, you know, maybe Stacey there'll be a Dash. few Few people kind of doing this. The few wild girls that were with the older boys or whatever. Oh but yeah, yeah, yeah. This idea that that was you know kind of any every high school I think is a little. Oh, overblown. it's kind of like a modern kids, but it's just <laughs> yeah, fucking exactly. But insane whatever. Insane how many hard dicks are in the show. Well, I didn't see a single one, but some might say you see what you want to see. It's a bit of a Freudian situation, maybe, where you see your dad's dick. <laughs> no vaginas. Well, there's this. There's this. Sh- uh, wet, there's this. Um, a meme page called uh, hood, hood. It's called Hip Hood Clips, right? <laughs> Ryan probably follows twenty different meme pages that have the word "hood" in them in some capacity. <laughs> I follow so much black meme Hoodville, pages. Wild that's, Hood Clips. Dude, that's one Hood-a-rama. of my Rama. That's one of my real I don't know if it's even a guilty pleasure, so maybe a uh what's the opposite of guilty? Just a pleasure. Uh, just, a just, pleasure. A, just a pleasure. <laughs> just a pleasure. Just a pleasure. Shameless pleasure. Shameless pleasure is uh watching, you know, rap beef drama uh, uh, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. on YouTube and stuff like that, right? So I get pretty into that and I do I do lo- guilty as charged what's I the like current, the pages. Like is it all Kanye? Uh, there's not, yeah, yeah. The, or is it like the kind of underground? Like, honestly, it's not even worth it. It's too inside baseball for you. <laughs> I mean, I have, yeah, I have no idea. This would be like me telling you, like, fucking what's going on in like the Toronto Marlies. Exactly. Like, but that, I don't think shit. anyone is interested in it. But the funny thing about the hip hood clips is every day they post like a photo of a hot girl and, it, and they have all the slang. They go, Yo, W Y D, like, what you do, you come home, this girl's sitting there naked. <laughs> and then every person's like, fuck her. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they go, and, and then their girls like see them commenting on this thing, and then they're like, <laughs> they go, yo, you come back to your car, this girl's in the passenger seat, titties <laughs> out, what y'all be doing? And everyone's like, bro, you fucking yeah. have sex with her. <laughs> yo, you break up with your girl. You come back, this girl be making food and says fuck me and then turns around. What y'all doing? We have a we have a boy from Toronto who's like comments on every single one of those. To, <laughs> really? Yeah, no, you know exactly who it is. <laughs> Commenting on that shit. You know exactly who it is, where he's just like he comments on everyone being like, Oh fuck yeah, like I smash that. <laughs> yeah. Everyone. That's so funny though. They go, Oh yeah. And you know, comment below if you would motorboat these titties. <laughs> I'd for sure motorboat. <laughs> you go, yeah, like thumbs up and stuff. You're like, that makes me laugh. What is the point of it? I know. It's just so funny. They just post a picture of a random girl and ask people if they'd fuck her. And they all, <laughs> people, the, the comment section is generally in agreement that they would all. Yeah. Are, are, there, are there a lot of comments going, nah, dog, I got, I'm married. <laughs> no. Next. Everyone seems to think that they tune her up if yeah. they were in that scenario. The, 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 the aforementioned scenario where you come home and the girl's lying naked on your yeah, back. Yeah. She's stuck in the washing machine. <laughs> what y'all doing? <laughs> I, I, I look at the comments too it gets me um, so <laughs> interesting study so this study came out that said that poorer man poorer men yeah. like bigger breasts and richer men like smaller breasts yeah. which is interesting because you fancy yourself a big man 
I like. I'm not. No, a, you're I, a Gazumba I, man. You, I, I, I like, like but I'm not like. The, I'm not like the fucking. Now the, that you the, find the out giants. that it's a poor man's. It's a well, poor man's I will <laughs> say that I I read this study, or not. I read the study, but I read the article, and I would say that I'd like to see this. Um, not done in uh, the study, not done in Asia. Well, it's a bad sample size. I feel like, in terms but they of, used white women. They said, "Oh, okay." They, I didn't realize that. But they, but they said a, they did it Asian, normally. It's and Malaysian men, men, though. They said they did it with men there. They didn't say that they were all of one ethnicity, but they used well, the same ethnicity of women, and they were white. Yeah, yeah. But there is a Malaysia. That was done in Malaysia, so I assume it's Malaysian. Men. Yes. Well, but I think that if you think about it, it seems to make some sort of sense because. Um, it's sort of the same way that, you know, there's poor people that want like, uh, fancy watches and gold chains and stuff to sort of prove that they have yeah, money. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, a, a confident... oh, oh, you're saying it's just a status thing <laughs> or something like that. They yeah. are. I mean, I will say that in places like Malaysia status is huge. You're saying there's also a thing where they're harder to come by over there. The big ones. Maybe oh, for sure. Dude. I mean, you just, yeah. Like if I, I, I can't speak for Malaysia. I've never been there, but I've been very close in like Thailand and stuff. And like, yeah, it's there. They're well, not, I've, I was thinking that, that about is this. Not, that is a juggler. I've society. never seriously dated in my life. A girl with big boobs. Interesting. Not one single time. I made it past like a, you know, sort of uh, yeah, yeah. dating or a little bit or whatever. Interesting. Yeah. It just doesn't, oh. it's not my thing. And I get, I get, I've, bored I've of been all, I've been all, I've been all over the map. Now you like him at the beginning, you're like, yeah, and yeah. then by the end, you know, by three months in, you go, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, going through the motions of the You're just going mode. through the motions. You go, <laughs> so I, <laughs> yeah, that is what I like. So I like, you know, slender girl, yeah. no tits, massive dick. <laughs> Dude, sounds like you should go to Thailand, man. That is fucking... <laughs> You're going to all you can eat buffet. <laughs> By the way, we have a couple studies this week. And I got to say, do scientists, when you get into science, think this is what your life is going to be like? No, you're not going to be doing boob studies. Yeah. But you're thinking of it the opposite. Imagine you have a job as a scientist and then you go, can I do a study on fucking titty sizes? Yeah. And then they give you the funding. Yeah, you get the funding. Some government funds your and, you, and then you're, you're just, living life. And you go, what about this one? 266 men they did low medium and high status and the rich boys go i don't need that's that's for poor you know the plebeians mm -hmm. you know what i'll i'll take they like the sort of you know slender supermodel look whereas the poor guys they go my want a gazumba yeah i want the big jugs because <laughs> they're stupider yeah it's a high it, you know what it is well, uh, i just put my finger on it it's uh the small titties and educated men's titty <laughs> that's an educated man's titty well i wonder if because they didn't say education they said specifically well you know how it's like sugary meals where it's you know if you're just um, a fat slob you just want you know the most sugary meals yes. and what do you like uh i just want a, a bowl of ice cream whereas if <laughs> whereas if you're sort of a fat a, a connoisseur of food yeah what you'd want is a really nice small portion yeah whereas i would consider myself like a connoisseur of and you go you can't trick me by just putting a big blah, blah, yeah, you're saying you want to go to the place where it's like you get <laughs> they bring out like the entree and it's like mm -hmm. a plate this big and it's like one pea with like a just like a little yes. like line of a sauce but it's the best pea you yes, ever yes, tasted yes, Absolutely. It's a delicacy of a pea. Yeah, yeah. It's like comes on like a spoon and it's yeah. like smoking. So that's me as a, you know, high class sort of, yeah. you know, what I do is I put my one monocle on and I sort of inspect the titty. Okay. Now another question back to the study. Well, so you do the study, you get the information. Okay. Now what? You put it the article out. But that's what I'm saying. Like, is this not meant to just, just we go, all right, we got that. And now we know. I think a lot of this stuff it's probably comes theory. from like university people that just have tons of, you know, they got to do these studies. They get their funding. And yeah. it's sort of a, it's like a wash. Like no one gains anything by any of this stuff. However, some of this stuff does where I'll tell you where this stuff becomes applicable is advertising. So for example, if you were advertising to men, uh, pictures of women in their advertising on the internet, yeah. you might show smaller titties to the rich guys like me when you're advertising Rolexes. And if you're advertising like a bowl of fucking slop from a trough <laughs> for people like you, the girl with you, big uh, jugs. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the kind of, you know, stuff that you could use. That's, these studies that that for. is true. That is true. The world of marketing could, uh, when you're advertising to you know high class gentlemen like me, worldly elites. <laughs> yeah, I like the idea of all these models with huge cans, and they're like, I can't get any fucking good work anymore. That's a thing. So I'll just fucking. And then the last one that food. actually sort of goes against my theory with you, yeah, is that hunger. It was showed that the hungrier the man, yeah. the bigger the titty they like. <laughs> so this well, is true. I'm, I'm always hungry. Well, that's what I'm saying. So that's sort of. 
But you're not because you eat a lot, right? So you're always full because you've always just stuffed your fat face. Yeah. Do you I find that? Do you find after you're done stuffing your fat face that what that you like big titties less? Because this is the information they said after the guys had a nice meal, they were they were. But when they're starving, they want a big set of gazumbas. But when they when they're done eating, they feel more back like an aristocrat, like me. Yeah, where I just want a nice flat chested woman. No, it doesn't need to be flat chested. Just, just just a smaller. Um, no, I don't really spend a lot of time thinking about breasts. I think, oh, I think more time thinking about food. To we have be honest. Lie of the, yeah. No, I honestly spend more time thinking about food than breasts. Interesting. Yeah, more of an ass yeah. man to be honest. Um, but yeah, I, I honestly think I spend more, more of a dude's ass man. Yeah, I am. Um, yeah, I spend more time thinking about food than. And breasts. it does depend. What they haven't messaged mentioned is the you know the size of the girl on the titties, right? Now, because if you're a hungry man and you see a girl with big boobs and big titties, you might be like that girl could cook me food. Yeah, you know that's where you do the thing. The girls having sex with you from behind, you start making dump truck noises. <laughs> beep, beep. <laughs> Beep, slap her ass, ride the wave, you know. Stuff I, like I would that. also like to know because I, you know, a lot of people they they asked are the type of people on on, on Instagram Live who are just like, please open. Like open. there's a, there's a lot of open, please people. But like Malaysia has a very high population of Muslim people, so I wonder if if they asked the Muslim people or they went to the non-Muslim. I'm sure that a super hard Muslims doesn't get to participate in their booby that's, study. Well, that's like fucking seventy five percent of the population. There. Sure, maybe you're right, but I would love, I would like to think. That if you were hardcore religious, yeah. you know, enough that your wife's got, you know, her face covered or whatever, you can't be like, all right, honey, you're not even allowed to leave the house. I'm yeah, going yeah. to do my boobs study. Come, someone knocks on your door and goes, hi, I'm uh, doing a study about breast size. And it's like one second, he comes back with just like a giant stone. About to just, <laughs> you go, just run away. God damn it. These fucking people with their stones. <laughs> Pro so probably one of my favorite things in the recent times was the, so the Tinder swindler, which I watched Best. and. And so Tinder this story. guy, yeah, he basically, it comes out after the Tinder swindle. I'm sure everyone knows about it by this point, but he swindled all these women out of all these things. Me and Danny both watched it. I don't know if it was a swindle. Well, this is what he does. He breaks his silence, and then he says he wasn't swindled. So in the thing, this has been one of my favorite probably things in the last five years is in the movie, his whole thing is his enemies are after him, right? So all I've been doing for the last three weeks is every time I'm like, babe, you got to pay for this, my enemies. I can't, I was like, you have to go get the remote. My enemies are after me. I know I can't make the bed. My enemies, you don't know what it's like. Yeah. Oh, you got to go get the food. The Uber Eats is here. I can't go down there. My enemies are after me. Yeah, I love it. They're so, it's so funny. Dude, the it's, balls on this guy. <laughs> he tells her, <laughs> everything he goes i need 10 grand and then she goes gives him 10 grand he goes i need you to get more money out why my enemies everything is because of his enemies are after him it's like probably one of my favorite things in the history of yeah, five years amazing. is that also the, his enemies are all there's after probably him. <laughs> for this one dude who who built a bunch of women there's probably like five thousand women who did the exact same thing to guys oh, and yeah. they weren't They're like enemies. my they weren't like my i need 10 grand my enemies are after me they're like i need 10 grand they're like why like I want it. Well, who, my enemies are after me. Who are your enemies? Uh, American Express yeah. creditors. <laughs> my yeah, landlord. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Your enemies are all just bill collectors. My enemies are after my me. Enemy, <laughs> my enemies are after me. I need to pay them. Who's your enemies? My landlord. American Express. <laughs> my makeup. Oh, my makeup bill collection. Yeah, yeah. I was uh, looking into his cameo because he's on cameo now too. Because I was like, we should get a cameo, but it, a cameo for the, for, from for the pod. And there's amazing. But they're How two, much does he want? Two grand. <laughs> he's dwindling. Well, they're they're, they're two hundred <laughs> for a personal one. But if he, he thinks it's like a business thing or whatever, they're two grand. He can tell the difference. Well, he knows you're not just wishing someone a happy birthday. Well, notorious Tinder swindler breaks his silence to slam made up Netflix documentary as his model girlfriend accuses his victims of lying and that he stole forty three four hundred and thirty thousand dollars from them and says he's never borrowed money from him so you know I, yeah again, because he never there was no promise to repay in his well, mind <laughs> th this is what <laughs> this is a gift but you said no, he for true. sure he went to jail right he went to jail as far as i understand for using a fake passport and that's what he got arrested ah. for. well i'll tell you what no, I, no, he, he definitely say, did all this shit like for him to say hey and his enemies were after him. i know but for him to be like hey yeah i never said i was like a billionaire or something you're like you're using a fake name that happens to be the same <laughs> name like you're not disputing the fact that you're, yeah. your name's simon levive when that's not your real name you didn't legally change it to that and then you're like there's this billionaire who has the same name like well I've dated people that are you know pathological liars no one like 
too too serious. Yeah. But you know, in the party scenes or whatever back in the day or whatever, right? Yeah. And I and, and the number one thing I notice about people that are pathological liars is they'll and I guess this is obvious to go down with the lie, but there's no amount of evidence that will ever get them to concede. Like you could be, you know, oh, you were at this party last night and you go, no, I, I wasn't there. And you go, here's a picture of you last night with the t- newspaper. And they go, I don't know. Someone yes. must be made that up because it wasn't me. Yes, like photos, they, they go, for, you can Photoshop anything. <laughs> the, I, I, that's what I, the biggest naive. thing that I've noticed is they will go down. They'll never admit it. And the truth is with people's psychologies, even, you know, me a little bit, you go, if someone's that sure and will never admit, it does leave the seed of doubt in well, people's it's mind. That's literally like I guess that's the whole thing of gaslighting, where you, you yeah, so you know like something's the truth, and then but that's like, the biggest thing of like a lot you know liars like this and scam artists. They will always stick with their lie yeah. till the bitter end. But this guy, it's amazing, he can still just like wheel chicks and stuff. Like, after well, he has all a pretty thing, hot chick, but I know. Well, and what, she he, doesn't believe it. She bought the lie, right? <laughs> he successfully gaslit her. Well, or, or she doesn't care because he actually does have money. And he's buying her, things. and he's kind of like this funny, famous dude right now. Now he's this funny, famous Martin Screlly style big totally. famous dude, right? And these girls are his new enemies. Like, so he are there many guys who are like, "Fuck that guy." Maybe like some, but like most yeah, guys, Seth are, Rogen probably doesn't probably, love him. but like most guys are probably just like, <laughs> yeah, it's funny. funny. Well, it's, it's funny. you know, it's it's just such that it probably happens the other way so many times, right? Yeah, exactly. But yeah, these salt gr- daddy of the decade. He's the salt daddy of his decade. These other girls. I mean, it is kind of sad when you look at you know some poor sap that he stole ten hundred sure. grand. That part is no, obviously- but this is this is where you kind of go the the problem with this guy. You go. If you stole five grand here, ten grand there, although those are terrible, they're not like devastating necessarily. Yeah. It could be for someone. I'm not saying for no one, but it is still one of those things where, you know, this at some point will be like, remember that time I got scammed out of five grand for when sure. you steal someone's entire life savings and put them in 80 grand of debt. Oh, 250 for the one. Right. So that, that's, yeah. that's she, a she different has no level. choice, but to probably that's when like the guys steal from the old people and stuff. It is the old no, no, no. scumbag. It, it, move. No, it is obviously a scumbag move. And then, but it's funny because watching, I think a lot of girls, like my, my girl was saying this, but you know, I'm sure, tons of them were like i would never do that like what the fuck like the they, one every girl like, says that's what it but her, also yeah. like the one main girl who gave him 250k like they were dating for like a month like the whole thing was like a month long and then he had seen her like a couple times he brought her around the he showed her the he, good life he, he gave her well he, he tricked her because he gave her that first initial like you know going on the jet the private jet yeah. or whatever and there was he had the social proof with the with his baby mama and the mm-hmm. kid he knew or whatever. the technique he knew the whole technique or whatever but then he's like he saw her like two more times and she's like I'm this is my boyfriend I'm in love with him we're gonna spend the rest of our lives together and I'm gonna give him all this money and he keeps like doing this and then like, and they have the voice notes of him for sure you know, like so they do have the voice notes where he's <laughs> I mean I, I, I don't back to back to back where you know the girl the one girl that stole his clothes at the end and she was pretty happy with herself for getting a little win there yeah and then she goes uh, she showed all the voicemails and the thing in the voicemails will be like you uh I'm going to kill you. You do not fuck with me. Every action has a reaction. And then the next voicemail will be like, okay, we can get through this. And then the next voicemail is like, I'll fucking kill you. You know, it's like, uh, happy Gilmore or whatever. Where he's like, you know, fucking, oh, baby, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, baby, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, I don't mean that. Yeah. So I think that probably this new girl, I don't think it's that she's so in love with him and that she doesn't care. I think probably what's happening is he still does have some money or whatever. Yeah. And he's buying yachts and jets. And and she's thinking yeah, like, fun. yeah, I just know that I won't lend him money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. She's like, it's a pretty easy thing. He's like, hey, can you take out a credit card? And she's like, right, no. because, well, she's just not going to loan him money. And then oh, that's all you have to do. Because if he came out now and he goes, this is completely unrelated, but my enemies are back. It's so funny, too, just where <laughs> how we are as a society where this came out. And this is like so damning and so just like such a gotcha. And then he's like. Yeah, I'm famous now. This literally solved all my problems. Like it really is. He goes, he goes. Now I'm, I'm going to be rich and, and famous. This, because he's going to be rich, and then he also said, he goes, I'm a legit businessman. I got into Bitcoin in 2011 it, when it was nothing. I don't need to <laughs> say how much it is worth now. So when in doubt, go for crypto. And this is what this guy's saying now. And he's trying to get a dating show, which I think he should get a dating show with one of the hood meme pages. <laughs> The crazy thing is, and I would love to get a real to the bottom of this, is why has he not? Like, what is the law? Like, why has he not been charged with anything related to any of this? Why is there no? Well, you told me that you said it's because there was well, no that, contracts that's what, or that's anything what like I, that. That's what I think is that there's, there's just like you can't. It's not. 
I, I guess. I, I haven't seen really anybody discuss like why he hasn't faced zero repercussions for this. I know. Because you said, because we talked about it, and you were like, well, you know, you still have a, a verbal agreement. And then in his like texts and stuff, there seems to be some sort of element. Text like, agreement. The text agreement. And then he made you. the girl the fake thing saying it, that she worked at his is company like, to which get is the like loan. Fraud. So he, 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 he was a. Um, at very least an accomplice to this fraud. But he committed a fraud. He sent her like a fake wire, a fake like... So that has to prove that he was attempting to do this. Right, unless Netflix just totally made it up. Possible. So you can't trust these people, right? These big tech companies, which no. are getting blasted right now. No, you cannot trust them. And the girl version of that, because there's all these, is the Anna Del V. And so Anna Del V was this... Uh, this girl who kind of did the same thing and she actually did go to jail or whatever, right? And I watched that one. And the thing about that is, and then we'll move on, is what I don't like about those, the Netflix version, is I, I when I was watching this, I felt like I knew a lot of girls like this. And they- Swindlers? It was just interesting to see the dynamic where you go, you got to think of this girl and the guy is almost the same thing. The the guy was swindling all these girls out of money and this girl was swindling all these people out of, you know, all different things, trying to swindle this banker. She swindled, you know, some rich girl out of uh, money. She went and stayed on this girl's yacht for six days while the girl was getting billed for it without her knowing. All this sort of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And in the, in the Tinder swindler, they make him as this evil, terrible person. And in the girl one, they make her as like, pretty empowered it's that more she was like, able to pull this off. It's kind of like a catch me if you they can They do it thing, like catch me go. if you can. Yeah. And it was interesting to watch how Netflix treats basically the same type of story well, guy versus girl. Yeah, women are victims in that matter. And it and it's whatever. They're allowed to do that. But it also was wrong because, I, I like I said, I know a ton of these kind of girls. They're, you know, always up to these scams or whatever, right? And the number one thing that happens is, first of all, they're always in fights. So they always start some business relationship and within six months, it's always in a big fight, right? So they do have the enemy they can back that part up. So they have enemies. But the thing is, that's not usually a good formula for being successful. And and this girl does disastrous things, makes all these messes of her life, makes messes of her personal life, make messes of her connection. Uh, you know, the two or three biggest people she had in her life all hate her now. All this stuff, right? But... They, and they were kind of saying like, yeah, but isn't she so like empowered, taking the world bull by the horns? And you go... Well, if they were, they, they wouldn't have been so uh, lousy at it. Yeah. Like, first of all, most of it didn't work. She got caught. She didn't get the bank loan. She didn't open up her thing. All she did was swindle people into sort of giving her trips and stuff. Yeah, she got kind of like close she, to it, Yeah, but, but she so didn't, yeah. really the story is this girl got people to accept that she was like in their club so they could go party and hang around or whatever and got some people to give her money. So, so basically men are better at swindling. Well, this guy got caught too, eventually. Well, he got caught for not the swindling. He got caught for the flying on I'm the saying they're kind of the same thing, but this girl was, you know, just a Her standard. Her thing seems like, I actually thought that was, because it's basically like that, what's that Will Smith movie from like the 90s where- Bad Boys. No, not Six Degrees of Separation. Maybe wild, Wild degrees, West. Where he pretends to be like the Sidney Poitier's like son or something, and he's like scams the socialites in New York and they're like- so Yeah, there's something to be said about scamming them. those stories. And they basically- uh, the the biggest funny part is the boyfriend is like this Indian dude that's ripped, shredded tech dude. Yeah. And then if you look up the real photo of him, it's like this tiny nerdy Asian dude <laughs> with big like Coke bottle glasses. So funny. <laughs> Not cool, Netflix. Not cool. Yeah. Stop but Asian hate. I was, I love the idea. The, the whole thing was she was like, I'm into art, right? Which is a good way, one to pick because it's the most bullshit nonsense, right? Yeah. That's, I think, the fucking, the same with the Will Smith one was he was an artist. Yeah, that's that's the biggest one. I I was loving the idea that if you think of modern art, right? That's the only thing in the world that you can just say modern in front of it. It sucks. Because you know how they used to do Nuit Blanche in Toronto when it was modern art exhibits, right? And essentially, you would be a couple of pop cans attached to a Bristol yeah, board. The shittiest, oh, you know, all the, all the, <laughs> stuff a child would make, right? Yeah, all the and then me and uh, Waldo and Jarek and some other people got drunk one night and went to the art gallery. And then we would talk to other people about the paintings as if we <laughs> wrote them. And then we would be like, this one, you know? Uh, and then we we were telling them, you know, and this represents capitalism and that. And they would be like, oh, that's so interesting. And we had people all fished in, right? And then sometimes we would get them fished in. And they go, there was one that just had a bunch of Rolo, the candy wrappers on a bunch of Bristol <laughs> board. And people would come over and they go, oh, that's nice. And then I go, 
And then it, <laughs> my favorite one is we did this a couple of times. We go, yeah, dude, I got to be honest. I just got baked last night. I had, <laughs> I had to put an exhibit together for Nuit Blanc. Dude, bang, bang this out. I whipped this shit up in 15 minutes. Dude, it's just popsicle sticks. <laughs> And we were telling them, and they go, oh, I couldn't even tell. Because they'd already said yeah, they yeah, thought yeah, it was brilliant. Exactly. So they're like, yeah, they can't <laughs> so go back on it. You can watch the, the arts bullshit, the people pretending to like the arts bullshit. Like, what other job could you do that at? Where you go into a place, you go, hey, uh, um, I'm here I'm hiring an accountant. And he goes, oh, I'm actually a modern accountant. He just sort of ruffles around the papers. <laughs> <I'm> modern. <laughs> <laughs> he just sort of, you know, he just gives you a bunch of weird papers back that he wrote crayon on them. They go, I'm a modern yeah. accountant. There's no other job. Modern Bank- comedian. Just, I, I, there's a few like a good ones. I guess. Some artists. The, you, the, yeah, the Banksy is the best where he fucking shredded. He's that not thing. a modern artist though. He's like a uh, street artist. Yeah, but oh, he does. He would. I, no, I, I don't know. Art no, modern well. art is when it's just Isn't like rubbish. Like after, oh, I you know what it's I mean? Just after a certain time. Well, I guess I'm. I'm not an expert, but, but from what I understand like of just these the modern art, avant garde, like just this, it's avant garde. Ch- children trash. <laughs> it's legitimately. Pieces of yeah. garbage. Well, you know, there's that thing where they they like they'll do like on one of those hidden cam shows where they'll get like a monkey at the zoo to paint a painting, <laughs> and then they like put it at a prestigious art exactly. gallery just to fucking make everybody. A look big like thing idiots. they do is to you know fight capitalism and stuff like that. It'll be like the McDonald's sign upside down. Dude, They're like upside down. Things. So there's I'm not gonna say the name of this, but my brother used to have an art gallery. I forgot about that. And yeah. he had this artist who had a lot of like stuff was like he's like kind of a famous artist, but like a lot of his paintings were like anti capitalism and he had one piece actually where i think there is the upside down mcdonald's in it there's actually the thing i'm <laughs> thinking of and he had it at the gallery and it was all like capitalism bad it's this big painting that's like you know the basically the the theme of the painting capitalism bad 150 grand really <laughs> uh, yeah, capitalist cap- yeah capitalism that sucks but uh yeah, you're right you're- that's so funny just you're right. From all angles, the artist making a hundred grand or whatever, the gallery, the person buying it. It's just, yeah. Like, is this going to be like a hundred fifty thousand dollar charitable donation? Or you're right. It's a scam from start to finish. Yeah. It's just like it's hard to just be like, I hate capitalism, and then just be selling your shit for the- literal again. Garbage. It's like you know, it was a nice painting, but he could also sell it for thirty grand. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be hundred fifty grand. He's just like that's what that's what he priced the, it. That's what he priced it at. I don't think you sold it. <laughs> the upside down stuff's incredible. Oh, the best. <laughs> Could take a quick second here to tell you about a new sponsor that we're pretty pumped about. So we talk a lot about crypto and stuff like that on the podcast. And we didn't want to, you know, we've had all these offers to do sponsors with the, you know, weird coins and stuff yeah, like that. Shill shit coins. Whatever. We've said kind of no to everything. And by the way, not financial advice. But uh we are gonna do a sponsor with Coinbase who asked us, and that's the one that I use. So yeah, me too. I think it's uh, that's why I thought it was a great company. Um, and the, the Coinbase uh, CEO is Coinbase. Coinbase. Yeah, Coinbase, he's, he's Coinbase. Do, he's doing cool stuff. But Absolutely. Do you identify as crypto curious? If you've ever thought about entering the world of cryptocurrency, but you felt maybe a little overwhelmed, Coinbase makes learning to buy and sell simple. So whether you've been trading for years or just getting started, Coinbase can help. If you've been following the cryptocurrency craze, Daniel Polishuk is all over that. Absolutely. Do, I will know. say that if you're kind of crypto curious, as they say, and you are, you know, you have a portfolio or whatever, the best thing you could do for a, just a huge asymmetric bet on the future of is just take, you know, uh, 0.25, 0.5% of your liquid net worth. It's not a lot. You could Not lo- financial advice. Not financial advice. But I'm saying <laughs> is that if you want to make this bet, it's it's a tiny bet that could have- You don't have to do anything crazy. You don't, don't yeah, like we're not saying- So you go- get 10 bucks for you in Bitcoin and when you do Exactly. Code, you get yeah. just, and honestly, the thing you need to understand about this stuff is it's just really software. Bitcoin, Ethereum, all this stuff. Really, at the end of the day, it's software. So you're just kind of, it's cool if you're into tech and stuff, like gadgets, all that shit. It's just cool. Yeah. That's it. And that's- So it offers a trusted and easy to use platform to buy, sell, and spend cryptocurrency. They offer portfolio membership and protection, learning resources, a mobile app, and you can trade securely and monitor your crypto all in one place. Whether you're looking to diversify or just getting started, millions of people in over 100 countries trust Coinbase with their digital assets. So for a limited time, new users will get 10 bucks for American Ten dollars, American, American clams, smackaroos, <laughs> in free Bitcoin when you sign up today at Coinbase.com/slash/boyscast. Sign up at Coinbase.com/slash/boyscast for ten dollars American clams, free in Bitcoin. And this offer is a limited time only, so to be sure to sign up today, that's Coinbase.com/slash/boyscast.
And once you got that in order, we also want to tell you how to get ripped. If you want to be ripped, like me and Danny, FitBod is the app for you. Now, I know it can be hard to get back in health, and I'm actually, I'm, I'm on my other cycle because I was, for the last three months, I was crazy to... Uh, you know, wrapped up in business and all this sort of stuff. And I was mm. editing like, you know, 12 hours a day oh, yeah. and this and that and working on the special and all this stuff where I actually had to take, I was just running a little bit, but now I'm getting back and getting jacked thing? again. I'm getting abs for the summer. <laughs> I'm getting my summer abs back. But it can be hard when you're comparing yourself to jacked people on the internet. Like if you're looking at my Instagram profile From or 2014 Danny's jacked high value males. But between if you're between balancing work, family, and life in general, it can be hard to make fitness a priority. You need a program that works for you, not against you. FitBod's innovative algorithm learns about your goals and training ability and crafts a personalized training regimen that's unique for you. And if you're on the road or you're just at your house, it can help you do an, a, a routine with just what you have at your disposal. For me, it would be, you know, bags of cash, for example. Absolutely. Whatever you have. You'll have access to personalized routine on their easy-to-use mobile app so you can start making progress on the goals anytime, anywhere. I like how FitBod's algorithm changes and updates the fitness plan as you go anywhere. You know, so whether you exercise three days a week or twice a day, every workout is scientifically proven to be better than the last. FitBod even tracks your muscle recovery. And for people like me, that it recovers a little quicker than usual, it's good to know that. It's those fast twitch muscles. Fast twitch. Quick twitch <laughs> muscles on the kid. Balancing your workout plan with a variety of exercises to avoid overworking certain muscles. It integrates with your Apple Watch, smartwatch, and apps like Apple Health, Fitbit, and Strava. Personal training can be tough on a budget, and FitBot is only $12.99 a month or $79.99 a year. So kick the new year off right and get started on your customized fitness plan with FitBot. Get 25% off a membership when you sign up now at fitbot.me slash boyscast. That's 25% to Roonies off your membership at fitbot.com slash theboyscast. Well, they, there's another vetting strategy for men. <clears throat> You ready for this? Yeah. This is, this is probably my favorite one yet. And this is what she says. This is a girl. She says, this is how you tell if people are high value or low value. And she says, Podcasting? what you need to do is, yeah, and say to a man, I don't trust men. And then watch his reaction attitude from that point on. It is not a foolproof vetting strategy, but I found often enough, it triggers low value males to start showing cracks on their masks very early. So out of the gate, you're just like, you know what's funny? It's funny because this is the, this is tagged as strategy. Literally, <laughs> this is like the tag here is strategy. <laughs> By the way, the ultimate strategy move if you're the dude is she goes, I don't trust men. You go, oh, that's cool. Like you're on a date. She goes, yeah, so I don't trust men. You go, oh, cool. I don't trust women. Me neither. Women. My enemies are after. No, you, you go, have to you, pay for this bill. No, you go, you go I don't, yeah, I don't trust women. Anyways, uh, should we order drinks? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then just like, be like, well, okay. you are, it is true though because it's it's almost always they forget that you're vetting too because you know, you, like you said, that what they really want is a bitch. But if I go on a date with a girl and at the beginning of the date, she's already spouting this, uh, you know, men are bad. I don't trust men. Any, they're all bad. I, in my mind, I go, yeah, there's no way I would hang out with this girl more times. Of course. Like, the only way I don't trust men and we're getting a second date is, is I don't trust men and her arms are just covered in fucking cut marks. And then I go, okay, there's there's a reason behind this. You're not just like... But those saying, would be self-inflicted, wouldn't they? But I'm saying, like, there's That's some... Too, there's, th but I'm saying there's probably, like, a real, like, where you get at, down to the reason for it. It's not like, oh, men stink. It's Cigarette like, oh, burns on Like, I had some really, like, <laughs> freaking horrible traumatic shit happen. You go like, oh, okay. Okay, I get you're like a you're like an abused dog. Yeah. You ever see those Sarah McLaughlin commercials and the dogs tied mm -hmm. up? They go try and pet them, and they're like, exactly. Well, they say he either gets very defensive and starts crying, not all men, or he gets mega offended and then starts throwing insults about women, or gets weirdly accommodating and trying very hard white knighting himself to prove that he's special, unlike other men. So basically, there's so, no right answer. Yeah, there's no right. There's nothing you can say <laughs> other than you just ignore it. I'll tell you what you don't do is the white knighting because they can. I'll t she is right that they don't like the white knighting as no. much as they pretend that they do. Any guy that thinks he's getting points when you go I don't trust men and you go 
fuck, it's finally someone's speaking the truth. We're the worst. <laughs> I love it because the point is not to start a debate. You're just stating a fact about yourself. <laughs> so um, what about you? So, uh, you know, I like basketball. I like going to see live music. Men stink. Uh, what about you? She goes, yeah, I don't trust men. <laughs> Do you have any hobbies? No. Not trusting men. Not trusting men. I don't trust you to tell you. <laughs> Uh, what kind of drink do you want? I don't trust you with that information. Yeah. <laughs> the the waiter like brings the drink. She takes a coaster, puts it on top of it. <laughs> yeah, one minute into the day. Yeah. Also, is that necessary? It's just so funny to me the idea of saying very confrontational, aggressive things, and then being like, if he fights back, <laughs> me sitting down, you go, I think all women are gold diggers, and then she, <laughs> it, how you know she's low value because if she if she agrees, if she agrees that women are bad, then you know she's just some white woman knight. Uh, Absolutely. But if she starts to argue with her, huh, that's how you know she's low value. Yeah, the worst possible thing she could do is try to pick up the bill in that scenario. That's <laughs> that's how you know she's a real piece of shit. Yeah, yeah fuck her, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so this, because um, we were talking about no fap last episode. Yeah. And then a bunch of people sent uh, some different articles of people doing no fap. Yeah. And it, it's, it's dark. It's a bit dark, right? A little right? dark, right? Like, that was, y- y- that's really, why I wanted to read yeah. them. Yeah. So basically, they just picked a few people that are posting in the forums and stuff like that, and it really is one of these things where you kind of, where you you do feel bad for them. Honestly, they talk about it like it's a drug addiction. Yeah, like a real like exactly. And this so this first guy he says he was like I was gonna fap and I clutched it and he goes I was tempted to do it for hours. Then I said to myself, Oh no, here we go again. <laughs> Here I go again <laughs> on my own. Myself. <laughs> Here I go again <laughs> on my dick. Going <laughs> 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 only in the dick I ever know. Remember? <laughs> <laughs> Slapping his dick. <laughs> 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 like, <laughs> ow. Here, Here I go again on my dome. And then he says, the room was now locked. My earphones were plugged in. <laughs> I was ready to give in. So he's really ha- he's really going through it right now, right? Holy shit. He's sitting there naked, earphones in. Oh no, here we go again. I was ready to give in. My heart was pounding very fast and it was milliseconds away from browsing. <laughs> but they're saying they're saying it, it's just it's a porn addiction that they're like the clutches of the porn addiction. Yeah. Yeah. Like they're they're like No, he's about to fap too though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He doesn't just watch the porn. That's even But, but I'm saying like if he goes just into the bathroom and just rubs one out, no porn, just pure imagination, is, is he still feeling bad? I think so. Equal bad. Yeah. It's, well, it's the no fap subreddit. So I think that they, or something like that. I can't imagine that they're. But the no fap subreddit porn. starts with a porn addiction and compulsive sexual behavior. Recovery I got to be supports. honest with you. I think the two go hand in hand. Yeah. 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 But um, if you're, I, I'm sure if maybe they, because I think they'd rather you watch porn and not fap than fap with no oh, porn. Oh, that's a, well, I'm, not, like I'm sure clockwork. I don't think they'd like either. Mm. But if you were the pervert, which I went to university with a guy that he used to do that, sit in the room and he'd watch porn. I had a friend go, who did that. Well, that's r- it's a re- that's a real psycho. Yeah, that was a weird one. Well, because all that stuff is so it's so much creepier. Just everything sexual is way creepier without the sex. Oh, if you walk in on someone and they're, they're just watching at a oh, computer, hello. and you go, oh, hey, sorry, I didn't mean to go, in- no I didn't say interrupt. You go, oh, no, I'm not You're doing not anything. You're not interrupting anything. Yeah, I'm not doing anything. Care oh, to join? Go, oh, I just heard pornography, hardcore <laughs> pornography, so I assumed you were masturbating. And you go, no, why would you think that? Yeah, I'm just watching hardcore <laughs> pornography. Yeah, yeah, I'm not some weirdo that's compared to fat midday. <laughs> what, you think I wouldn't lock the door if I was going <laughs> to... Yeah, so he no, used to do that. Can have a seat. And they go, my heart was beating fast. I'm whispering repeatedly, God help me. I have a feeling God's nowhere to be found, man. He's not, he's not giving you the strength for this. I shouted in my mind and got out of my room and ran to the showers. When I realized that be- I beat temptation, I celebrated while taking a shower and I was genuinely happy. Guys, if you are tempted, turn that phone off, get outside, hang out with some friends. So this guy lived to play another day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's the end game for this? Is that funny? His boys are like, you want to hang out? And he's sitting there just looking at himself like, don't fucking do it. <laughs> crying, you know? Just punching himself in the dick. You're just... crying with your friends and they go, what's wrong? You go, I live to play another day, boys. 
What's the end game? I didn't jack off. Just never jack off? Stop your jacking off, I guess. Just you never even have the urge to jack off ever. I think the thing is where you become so in control, you get hard and then you look at your dick, you go, not today, Junior. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not falling for that old trick. Because this could be like an urban myth or something, but I was under the impression that it's actually bad not to. It's like something for your prostate that it's actually, you need to. That's what your old gym teacher told you. Yeah, hey, yeah. This is helping you. Yeah, yeah. And go, well, what does that have to do with my prostate right now? Well, if you, one technique <laughs> is you punch. <laughs> You start punching your dick. You go, not today. You want to fuck? You want to go? You want to start this again? Yeah. I mean, I'm sure pornography is a, a legit problem for people where they, you know. This guy had stuff not as good of a thing. He said, so long story short, I'm 22 years old, single guy who faps daily. Today, I nearly damaged my dick. It's in a, it's in a lot of pain. I don't know why. I fapped five times today. It's been a lot for me. I believe my dick will be all right tomorrow, but he's not sure. But what pains me the most is my current state. I'm a straight up loser currently with no success now. And this will be my last day as an addict. I mean, I don't he's think hanging up the, he's hanging up the lube. I mean, I feel bad for him because he thinks this is the thing that's holding him back. Well, I'm sort of think, agree with you that this feels like a real chicken and egg situation. I don't, I mean, again, do you jerk because you're unhappy or you, <laughs> <'cause> you jerk? <laughs> Uh, you know what's so funny is like when we were 22 years old, at no point did you think like jerking off w once a day and you go, holy fuck, I'm a junkie. <laughs> like, what am I doing with my life? I definitely didn't jerk off when I was a teenager or whatever and then look in the mirror and look at you, you <laughs> fucking disgusting. But like you think, oh, this is a problem. Yeah, I was more looking at myself like. Nice wank, bro. Yeah, well, or you're like, okay, now I can get on with my shit. That's exactly like what it's it is. it's a chore. Almost. It was a you're chore. just getting it out of the way. So it's brushing your teeth when you're 22. <laughs> like you're just like, I'm just gonna fucking brush my teeth, rub one out, and we can get on with my day. Yeah. Or in your gym teacher's case, brushing his teeth. Brushing. <laughs> hey. Yeah. So this is the kind of stuff that they're going through. They're ha they're having a hard time with it. But it is true. This guy, he goes, I jacked off four times a day. It's like, well, that wouldn't happen if you just had a job or anything to do. Yes. <laughs> Except for you, you denied it, but you said you wouldn't jerked off at the library at school. <clears throat> I mean, maybe I did. I don't remember saying that. I'm so, sure. I'm sure. I speaking possibly. of these blue check marks lying and just, um, there was uh, the New York Times released this the failing pretty, New York Times. Yeah, the failing. Are they New York failing Times. New York Times or the lying New York Times? I can't the remember. Lying New York Times, the New York Lives, the paper of broken record. But they basically had this ad campaign that was in New York but subway stations. And it said... That was DC. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it, it was on the subway station. It said, uh, Leanna is imagining Harry Potter without its creator. And then there's another one that said, independent journalism for an independent life. And this is kind of the idea. But it was just the most bizarre ad campaign I've ever seen. So the whole thing was, I guess, it'd be the equivalent of being like, you know, the, uh, just a girl sitting there and she goes, huh. I'm imagining the Beatles without having those songs written by white men. Yeah, yeah. Or whatever, right? Huh? The idea is, you know, imagining the boys cast if it hadn't written by I'm imagining podcasters. imagining Annie Hall if it had been Yeah. So there, you know, the New York Times is writing kind of is doing ads the way that you would expect from like the cut. You know, yeah, yeah. This is like or like this everyday is like, feminism. This is like, like pink pretty news. over the this top. Is like a pink news ad. Yeah, it's pretty over the top for the New York Times. Not that I have put so much gravitas on the fucking New York Times, no. but I put more gravitas on the New York Times other than having a you know an article that's just like you'll me imagine the Harry Potter girl didn't have any you know hadn't said you know problematic things. Yeah, and the advertisement is just like for independent news. They're saying. Now, Which they consider themselves, I guess. Do you think this is um, pure, like purely, like really well thought out by design? Where they go, we know, like it's kind of like there's no such thing as bad publicity. Where where they're like, we almost want just uh, that's if we just want them, everybody fucking. If you're giving them the benefit of the doubt, it's that. But it is that's what I'm wondering. What do you what do you think? Like, do you think this is a shrewd move on their part where they're like, no publicity is bad publicity. Let's just whip people up with these crazy takes that we don't actually believe, and because we know that we'll whip up people on one side and another side, and it'll get spoken about. Or is there someone who goes, yeah, like fucking, like I think those things blend together because the. I think certain people at these organizations really do believe this stuff. So they think that they're fighting the good fight with this, right? Mm -hmm. And then I think that there are people like, for example, higher-ups and editors that probably think this is stupid, but they go, 
Every, I'm going to be the Nazi if I say I'm against this, plus maybe what you said. It yeah. probably does get some clicks anyway. Like, so. I wonder if this is an ad agency. It is. And this reminds me that, you know, so the, the, the same thing is uh, just how little these places have any real credibility with anyone who's paying attention. Anyone who hasn't, you know, completely bought, not you know, to really believe the news and all that stuff right now, you know, full stop, yeah. you had to have believed nine contradicting opinions by now, right? Because oh, these narratives minimum. have switched five times and you've had to switch. It's legitimately, you know, they asked you two plus, they told you two plus two is four and you started yelling at people who said it was five and then they told you two plus two is five and then you yell at people who say it's four, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you have to go through all these things. I mean, this is tabloid behavior, basically. Tabloid behavior. And it was interesting to watch. They did a podcast awards, right? I, we talked about that, right? I showed you. Uh, I mean, yeah, I tweeted about it, like the, the yeah. seven best podcasts. So they were, you know, and it, they did the seven best podcasts and the level of credibility you have to lose to say the seven biggest, you know, the seven best pod, uh, comedy podcast and just picking podcasts that aren't even, you know, they're, other than Trevor Noah, aren't even in the top 100. Yeah. A lot of them no one's ever heard of. You know, you have these huge podcasts in comedy, you know, Tim Dillon's and, you know, the, all yes. these huge, Rogan, po- that, that whole universe to completely ignore and say these are the biggest podcasts. It just reminds me of, you know, when we were in Canada and they go, this is the number one show and you go, Nobody watches Nobody that, watches and it's just all based on a lie. It, I was ca- talking to Adam Twenty Two about that. He's saying in rap, it's a huge thing too, where they go, you know, they're always Megan Thee Stallion. They go, here's the number one person, and anyone who pays attention to raps, like she's not even the top twenty of album sales, oh. ticket sales, whatever you want to. Name I mean, it, they right? li- they literally live in a different. They live in reality. a made up virtual reality. They, they live mean, in this bubble where that it, to them, you know, you have to pick a podcast that has like a giant corporation behind it. Even though like the Imagine ethos that. of podcasts is that it's like Think about not how corporate. crazy that is though. To, that, what you just said is, is pretty uh, true. But how crazy is that where they go, listen, we, we're going to pick, we don't want to pick the underground podcast. We need to pick the corporate podcast. Mm. And you're trying to, yeah, and you're you're trying to be like, Hey, we want to support podcasts. The top 10 podcasts are, you know, Amazon's podcast, Netflix yeah. podcast. And this it's kind of what the, my sponsor thing that I was doing with the, the podcast videos, where yeah, it's these course. nobody podcasts and were sponsored by, you know, Comedy Central Podcast Studio or whatever, right? I remember when we were in Toronto, they had this big podcast on every billboard. Remember that? Yep. And it was a podcast on every billboard. And if you go, it had, you know, 100 uh, star ratings, yeah. you know? Yeah. Just a total podcast no one's ever listened to with these huge pushes. So it's... It's funny to watch how little credibility. I mean, it is the beauty of the whole thing is to watch them hang on to this kind of. Well, first off, this is like they made a fake podcast awards. Like it's not like the it's not the Oscars where they're like, oh, it's the podcast awards. Like it's we've been doing this for eighty years. How it starts? I mean. The, the, it's a, it's all part of you know manufacturing consensus if you want to kind of but be it's funny because they it. go we're going to start a podcast award and then instantly delegitimize it to anybody <laughs> who follows this like they didn't even try it's true it's almost i mean i quite not the same thing but remember the original the first grammy for hip hop was will smith yeah, and DJ Jazzy Jeff, and they were up against. I can't remember who, like NWA or something, and everybody's like, "Well, it's Snoop or whatever." And sure. everybody's like, "What the fuck?" But Will like, Smith was, you know, that was he one was of the big, biggest but, singles but at the, of the time, year. At all the time. The, but all at the time, everybody's like, "He's not the best." They thought it wasn't the best, but it was. But the they've biggest, kind yeah. of changed a bit or whatever. But no, I'm not. But I will this never is, argue. But this is insane. if it was the biggest, you know. Yeah. It's listen. If you if if you want to say. This is the best thing, and it's got the biggest numbers. It's the number one thing. If you want to say Big Bang Theory is the best show, you can say it sucks. You can say whatever, but at the end of the day, it's not insane no. to pick the show with the biggest numbers and say that's the of, best of one. Of course, of course. It's crazy Mark Maron didn't make that podcast because he kind of checks a lot of the boxes. He's not comedy, I guess, maybe, but he is, though, for sure. You're right. So I don't know why, but so my question what, to you someone's is- Someone's listening to all these being like, not enough laughs per minute? No, it is just what category it's under, but you're right. It probably is under comedy. (laughs) Going to take another quick break where we're telling you this episode, all the stuff we're telling you about how to get ripped, shredded. So I told you I've been on my, what I like to do is I've, I don't know if they, (laughs) 
<laughs> I'm not saying that they. Uh, <laughs> I know exactly what you're meant to say. <laughs> I don't know if uh, Athletic Greens necessarily wants to endorse this, but what I do is I always do a bit of a fast yeah. Yeah, yeah, when yeah. I'm getting ready. And it's funny that you used to say you starved yourself. Now it's because it, fasting has become cool. Well, no, because I always would drink coffee and stuff like but, that. But I'm saying like fasting became. Remember, everybody's like, you got to eat. What? They basically copied what I've been yeah, saying. Yeah, people like, were calling me crazy. For exactly, what I was doing. and they were like, you can't starve yourself. Remember, they're like intermittent fasting people are like you have to eat breakfast and then mm. people stopped eating breakfast and now the best thing you can do is not eat breakfast everyone's kind of copying what i said forever but i what i have been doing is drinking the athletic greens i've been having those every morning so it. that's what i've you know during my fast but i was having them anyway but it's, it's part of my fast i, I have actually been fa uh, funny you say that i've been <laughs> fasting on every tuesday and the one thing i have is athletic greens yeah, there yeah. you go. So that's what we do. If you don't have time, you want a better gut health, more energy, optimized immune system. Maybe you hated taking pills and vitamins. You wanted a supplement that actually tastes great. And you wanted to see what the hype's about. I've been on it for over a month now. And it tastes great. It doesn't taste super healthy. And it kind of has a mild tropical taste. So... What is this stuff? With one delicious scoop of Athletica Greens, you're observing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help start your day right. And it supports mental clarity and awareness. You're investing in an all-in-one nutritional insurance trusted by leading health experts such as Ryan Long, Danny Polishchuk, Tim Ferriss, Ricky Gervais. And right now it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially heading into the flu and cold season it's just one scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens will give you one free year's supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase, which I like. Also, it tastes really good because a lot of those green things taste like shit. That's why I'm saying you like drinking it. It actually yeah. sort of helps. A lot of those things are like medicine. This is not. But. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash boyscast. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash boyscast to take ownership of your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Let's get back into it. This leads us to our the real question. So Danny has done a deep dive. Yeah. And Truth Social, is it a bust? It's, well, if you say- Are you, you're I, on Okay, right I'm now. on it. First, uh, my first question is, is it a bust? But before that- I've been re-truthing like crazy. How bombarded with truth are you right Dude, now? It's insane. <laughs> um, I literally, my third eye is open. I kind of almost have a fourth eye now. You have a fourth eye. The fourth eye. eye is kind of trying to get in there because it's- uh, Are you even hungry anymore now that you've, you know, ingested so much truth? You're like, no, I can't eat right I, now. I, I can't do anything right now. It's just too much truth. Uh, truth so, so I signed up for our friends, sent us like this whatever beta- sign up because most people can't sign up still yeah so well this is most someone, people can't sign up. well this is what people said trump's true social disastrous launch raises doubts about his long-term viability so obviously we're going to look at this with a with a nonpartisan eye because it's very clear that obviously no matter what they're going to be trying to say it's bad right yes. so there's a lot of articles saying it's bad but i think that that's not so much just you know so, trump haters so i i've i've been on i've been in you know poking around on there like a little bit i haven't spent a ton of time it's exactly like Twitter, except there's no explore page. So there's no like way to just kind of- Kind of makes it useless a little bit. But also there's not a lot creators of- creators or Yeah, whatever. but there's also not a lot of people on there right now because they're really like easing people in. Like everybody who I've spoken to is on a wait Well, list. this is a big thing they were saying. And okay, so they just their first sentence, his long promised social network, Truth Social, has been almost entirely inaccessible for the first days of its grand debut because of technical glitches, a 13 hour outage and a 300,000 person wait list. So yes. to me, this seemed- you know, and you could argue to me if you think this is what the case is, where it's like, oh, we're trying to build some hype. But to me, opening up a social media platform and then you can't get on there seems insane. Well, this is this is the technological equivalent of the pack of the empty nightclub with the giant line out front. Yes, but like, well, you know what I'm saying? Where they go, oh, this place is bumping, and then okay. you get inside after you wait outside. And you're but my inside. argument would be, yeah. in a media news cycle situation. You want to get everyone into that club before anyone stops caring about well, it. Well, here, okay, so this is what I would, my, here's my guess. From using it, it is, I'm not going to say it's buggy, but there have been a few things where I use them and it's like the scroll kind of like jump, it jumps a bit. There's, there's, it's, it's beta for sure. It's like not 
ready for mass Then use. why did they let it go? Out? Because I think they want people. The don't best. they have so much money? Why can't they? They don't. Like, I mean, they have a lot of money, but I honestly think for something like this, the only real way, like something like Twitter had... They they were able to just grow organically, and they you know they made. You're saying there's never been really a scenario like where, this, a, where a social media app started with this many and people. Yeah, they the they need to ease them in because they. So I'm. So you're sort of an apologist. You I'm think not an this apologist. It's, it's, it's it's I don't use it. To me, the there's waiting one list feature seems nuts. There's literally one selling feature of Truth Social above Twitter, and that it's Donald Trump is on there. There's no other reason. <laughs> Twitter with Trump. Yeah. There is no other reason to be on Truth Social unless you hate. Twitter, like yeah. you're against the, you know, the, you don't like the, color. the oligarchs <laughs> of whatever the, you know, the, the technorati or whatever the fuck, but like you were only on there because that's where Trump is yeah and that's it. And you don't even need to be on there for Trump because you will see his posts on Twitter when someone just screenshots them and puts them there. But the, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, my guess is they're just trying to work out the bugs. But so I have this like, um, it's called like test pilot some app this is how i got access to it and so you agree you're like an apple like a tester of the app and they're sending updates constantly so they've got you working they're not working i don't even go on you're I went a, on there no, you're a full-time tester um but yeah but but they are so you're sort of an employee of true social basis, yeah i got it they, they gave me shares of the <laughs> spac and uh, it's going good but they are constantly <laughs> babe i can't eat dinner i'm testing i'm testing truths <laughs> But they're constantly sending out updates. So, you know, he likes sending emails. Yeah. Well, it's not from him. It's he hasn't done anything with it. That's the weirdest Has part. Has he tweeted about it. yet? No. He's it's, waiting it's for the more truth, people Ryan. to get on there for he his truth. Right. Do you think that Plus I can never get I'll never get past the fact that calling it truth is the it's lamest insane. thing. No one's ever gonna be like, Oh, did you read truth that? <laughs> Oh, it, when the news, when CNN has to start being like, oh, and uh, this article that was re-truthed by truth Donald or truthed, <laughs> like it doesn't Donald really, Trump really <laughs> truthed a lie? It, it, More right? lies truthed by Donald Trump. It doesn't Trump. even sound right. It doesn't <laughs> roll off the tongue, truth. and they, they can't go. You know, they put the whole brand around truth so they can't change that I, right maybe they can i don't know but. well so these are some of the problems i think that is it possible because there's this big wait list is it possible that and you said donald trump hasn't been very vocal lately is that because he's busy vetting every single person to make sure that they tell the truth <laughs> maybe you know what i mean because is it possible? or he's waiting for it to be ready you know what Actually, he's vetting everyone's things to make sure no. you know he goes ah this guy doesn't look like a truth teller he liked a hillary tweet i'll, I'll say this though now that we're talking Talking about it, I didn't really think this, but he will be once he starts truthing, he will be the ultimate stress test on that app, right? Like uh -huh. once he starts cranking out those, those truths, are gonna get truth. <laughs> they're gonna. That's when it's gonna. That app is gonna start getting put to the test. Okay. So maybe they're they're saying like, look, wait, it's not ready yet for you to start dropping all this truth. Okay. Uh, that would be my guess, but I, I don't know. Well, these are some of the look, other. Problems. He had seventy million people vote for him. If he, I don't know what. Well, there's I, 300k in line right now, so it's not that insane. Twitter has, I believe, 200 million users or something. If he gets, he right now has 300k in the queue. So and he it's had not what? That, yeah, it's not that crazy. But I, I mean, a lot of people are, you know, wait and see kind of thing. But you got to think there's a good chance he could get half of the people who voted for him. It's very there. possible. It's they said five million people. Truth socialist. So this, these are some of the problems they said. There is no better sign of a rushed implementation than the fact that you can't onboard anyone. So I'm hard pressed to understand. Understand why anyone would trust that these people would keep your information safe. So yeah, is but that nobody a good trusts point? Twitter. I don't trust Twitter to keep my information <laughs> okay. safe. I trust to the moment that anything happens on Twitter, I fully expect them for, on them to turn on me. No, but just... do they have information leaks at those big companies at these points? What information? Well, for what example, the way that like all like your a credit card or something. Yes, all your passwords. I, and I stuff mean, like that. I've been subject of multiple password credit card hacks of, okay. of companies that we're purportedly okay, so, supposed to trust. So you're voting for one for Donnie. So one you're, for Donnie. You're yeah. sort of on the fence of whether the whether the wait list is good. You're so 
sort of uh, you're on Donnie's side. The the information thing is the same as anyone. Truth Social has already banned an account named for a Twitter parody that targeted former Congressman David Nunes, who resigned from Congress to become the Trump social oh the Devin Nunes company yeah, yeah. CEO. So there was also another thing where people were coming out saying they had sensitive content notices. So obviously, you know, anytime these apps come out, people always go to them and then they you know tweet the worst things and then get you know notices and then they go look they're already censoring so they're not saying they're going to be not censoring them. well that they never said that well they're, all they said is they're not censoring one person they're already <laughs> <laughs> that's the entire selling point of this whole thing is that we're not censoring one guy and he does have the thinnest skin ever so it's very possible that anyone that tweets badly at him he goes <laughs> of course no fucking no big, truth for you yeah you're getting the fucking <laughs> he's umpire the, treatment he's your west you're no, out. he's gonna be the truth nazi truth nazi <laughs> but I, in a very Trumpian fashion, too, you know that two months ago, he's like, it's coming out on President's He's Day. getting ready for- No, but it came out on President's okay. Day. Okay. But do you think he has a lot of good truths ready to go? I'm sure. Oh, I'm sure he does. But <laughs> Probably you, has that giraffe on you his You know phone. in his mind, he goes, it's coming out on President's Day, and the engineers are like, there's no way it's going to be ready. Zero chance we're going to be ready to go on President's Day. So that's what happened, And then he goes, think? President's Day, it's a beautiful day. It's the best day. It has to come out on President's Day. <laughs> Well, another thing that they don't like is he's benefiting from the Section 230 when, you know, he uh, was against it so much. But that doesn't really make sense. It's, that's one of those hypocrisy ar uh, uh, arguments where you go, well, just because you want to change a law doesn't mean you're going to start living by the other law. Because that doesn't, obviously, that of doesn't course. make any sense. Like, it, I don't even agree with the, when people call hypocrisy on that, when someone says they have a lot of money and they go, you, they say they are for higher taxes and they go, well, why don't you just give away your money? And they go, well, that's not really what I'm arguing for. It's, mm -hmm. it's like a more of a yeah, system. We change it for, yeah, it's the system. Yeah. But, so I, I and guess. also, what, this is a Washington Post article. What scenario is Washington Post going to release an article being like, yeah, well, the I true think social, I, amazing. Well, that's why we have you here as a, a true base. Beta test, beta beta test, beta beta test. I would not turn. I would not be quick to dismiss True Social. I'll say that it's fine. There's a lot of like, real, you know, legitimate like, you know, NFLs on there and stuff. Mm, there you I, go. I was surprised. I thought it was it was going to be the whole, WWE. I thought it was all just going to be. Oh, for sure. But I thought it was all just going to be Ted Cruz and everything. But there's like, you know, there's stuff on there. I, 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 you need, you can't say anything about Truth Social until Trump starts truthing. Okay. And they said, there were some other signs that Truth Social's growing pains were just getting started. The app now available only for iPhones in the United States or on a help page, the site's own name is misspelled. So they had a typo. That one's reaching. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or they go, that, that's that's the type of things I was expecting more of where if it was crushing it, they're going to be, there's a typo on this. I site. will say one thing that didn't annoy me, but I, I kind of was, uh, I didn't even think about this, but when I went to set up my account, I just did Danny jokes because I'm not everywhere. But then our friend who, uh, he's on there and his uh, username is straight up his two initials and I was like oh that'd be like a good one and but they don't have any way to go change your username like you could on Twitter so once you picked yours you're done yeah, that's and what it. do you have Danny Jokes just Danny Jokes which is fine well you want to be across platforms anyway I know but uh, I thought it'd be cool I and tried to get Danny. I tried to get just Danny. That'd be that cool. Was, that was and good. apparently other fake truth socials made copycat apps that were actually working better. So a lot of people were signing up for these other apps. So that Great. Well, they lack rush. one thing that true social has, which is <laughs> Donald Trump. I don't like, this is, there's one <laughs> You're sort of, you're, you're in it for the truth right now. You sort of seem like a truth supporter. There's just, there's only- You're a truth groupie. Truthy. Why would you ever use a Twitter clone? <laughs> <laughs> that's worse than Twitter Without when you're already on Twitter yeah. that not a lot of people are on unless they offer the forbidden fruit. Yeah, the that, forbidden. That, that, you know. You calling him a fruit now? Your, your leader? <laughs> Do you, so what are you in? He your, is not my president. What are you and your truth social buddies tweeting about? You're just saying like pretty sick to be on here, right? Yeah. I haven't. Know. The only thing I tweeted was, or truth, sorry. I'm gonna, <laughs> that's going to be hard to get used to. Uh, is I, my first truth was just saying about my low value mail podcast. How did that? How many retweets did you get? Uh, zero. <laughs> uh, I think I have like ten followers. So you're not getting. I, I have ten followed, followers. I followed though. the NFL. I followed our buddy, and I think maybe one other person. And I think I've I don't know twenty followers or something. Have you been logging on every day checking? No. It, did you go check his profile? Like, oh fuck, nothing yet. When he truths. You're going to know about it. Do you it's going to be in the fucking news. Do you think that's trips. like the guy that's trying Holy not to fap? Shit. That's you <laughs> trying not to look at Trump's thing? Like I told myself. No, I that's look. him trying not to 
fucking send the truths out. <laughs> That's Tell Trump. And they're like, yo, it's not ready. And he's like, whoa. He probably, he probably got his itchy oh, trigger he's finger. shaking. <laughs> itchy truther finger. Do you not remember how much he used to tweet? He has probably when he was not finger, the president right. of the United States. Like when he was the president, it was less, and it was still a crazy amount. And he had the responsibility of being the president. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. When he was not the president, that guy was like just brain dumps all day long. Well, the on the sort of on the same topic, the Let's Go Brandon guy. They're writing all these articles. <laughs> the actual driver whose name is Brandon. Yeah. He said, "Let's go, Brandon driver, caught in an unwinnable culture war," and he's sort of struggling with the fact that uh, everyone's. First of all, he got all this hate. And all these different things for people oh, that I hate Trump. Him. He didn't do anything. No, but they hate, uh, they love Biden so much, they just hate guys named Brandon now. <laughs> yeah. So apparently, you know, this guy's in the middle of the thing and they go, they did an article with him and he was like, uh, he goes, you know, uh, it sucks, but at the same time, at least my name's out there. People know who I am now. So uh, he goes, there's probably some rep- repu- reputability to that. So he's kind of like, at the end of the day, I'm also Yeah, you get a, a sick my pillow sponsorship. <laughs> Other than that, what are you going to do? He said he was just trying to stay out of it and stay silent. And he goes, he was getting so much hate online. But this guy's basically entire life has turned into being the Brandon guy now. Yeah. It, and he was probably not political guy at all. He wasn't trying to be political. He, he wasn't. It had nothing to do with him. They just... They, no. They were fucking chanting "fuck Joe Biden." I know. And then the chick said something, and now and he he got the they tried to get a sponsorship or whatever of the let's go Brandon coin and then NASCAR because he's like a because he's like a lower independent club, so he's like doesn't have the good car. Yeah, yeah. So I he know. can use the money to really make him better, and then they straight up. Uh, I said no denied guys. him. So I why can't he get a my pillow sponsorship? That makes so much sense. Yeah, but he doesn't want to be so partisan, because he doesn't want to be. So, yeah, but, but uh, then like, don't why NASCAR's you trying to get a Brandon so, car then? But yeah. NASCAR's must skew so hard Republican. No, they do. But for some reason, this guy doesn't want to be in the heat like that. To make he should go trans. That's what I was thinking. He could end this right there. That'd be hilarious if he's, he says, "Look, I'm I'm trans. No one will I'm be tra- I'm trans anymore." Now. Yeah, and if you like me, you like trans people. Yeah, that'll be the end and of that's this. the end of it. <laughs> he just has to go trans for like a uh, month. And then, yeah. <laughs> well, something we were kind of talking about before was uh, just this one article that, so 50 Cent, he did the Super Bowl performance, right? Yeah. And I just this BuzzFeed article, these are kind of my favorite things. And that my f- favorite things are when something happens and their just interpretation of it, you have to be on a different planet. So basically the article they wrote, 50 Cent responded to body shaming comments following his Super Bowl performance. So basically people were calling him fat and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. And they, 50 Cent, comment on it, and they basically, their take on it is, yeah, and he clapped back at body shaming, right? Well, he's Lizzo. (laughs) Yeah. He might as well be Lizzo. He's, in, he's the, a, in their framework of how stuff works, he's just he occupies the exact quadrant. Exactly, that Lizzo. Lizzo. There is nothing stupider than space. the G Unit beater. By the way, That's the so G Unit funny. wife beater might be the worst piece of clothing in existence. Dude, Donnie <laughs> Wahlberg used to wear one sometimes on Blue Bloods. The only thing worse than the G Unit beater is the black G Unit beater. The the whole thing. It had its moment. No, in, it was the worst piece of clothing. But at least you know they are for insane. Six months in what year did it come out? Two thousand four. Dude. I would fucking love if you just started wearing a G unit beater this summer. <laughs> I had like Danny, some... let's do the podcast one podcast of G unit beaters. I'll, yeah, I'll do that. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the cheap unit beaters are so funny. Bum, bum. <laughs> ah, shit. But this is what he said. He goes, 50 Cent, who's like actually funny, actually posts pretty funny things. He goes, they're just teasing me because they know I can drop the weight. That's why I laugh with them. Fat shaming only, only applies when you're ashamed for being fat. And then BuzzFeed, in his mind, that's BuzzFeed slapping back at fat shamers. That's him saying that, no, if you're fat, you can lose weight. And also, I don't care. It's legitimately the opposite of what, but like, BuzzFeed. Yeah, yeah, it's not what Lizzo's saying where, where she's, she's saying, oh, I'm going to gain 400 not, pounds despite all of you. He's not saying actually i look amazing he's saying yeah no i'm kind of fat and he's also not saying it's wrong to do this he is legitimately saying the opposite of what he's doing he goes yeah it's kind of funny i've got fat and then buzzfeed goes uh when he said that he goes for what it's worth it's also cool if you can't or don't lose the weight i know that was the best (laughs) 
<laughs> so, first of all, have you seen there's these new things? I'm going sure. On? Buzz, I'm sure BuzzFeed, by the way, had articles about Adele losing weight and how that's like so tragic. For they've all women hated and, it. Yeah. Well, they've had these tweets going viral lately. If you've seen them, I have not. Well, there's these uh, like there's, I'm I'm only on Truth Social right now, so I'm just, <laughs> I don't think BuzzFeed's on Truth Social. Well, this so. might this won't be allowed on Truth Social. Too true. Too too much. Well, untrue? it's a fat positive activist dude, right? You know, a kind of bearded. You know, uh, does the face? <laughs> What's the face? Soy the, face. Does the soy face? Yeah. <laughs> but he he posts. Uh, he goes. It's funny when people you know try to get people to lose weight. Essentially, fat conversion therapy. And even though there's no evidence that that's possible, and <laughs> basically this guy's so engulfed in it, he goes, he doesn't. It's not possible for someone to lose weight. And it's fat conversion. You're trying to do fat conversion therapy. I, I right? somehow miss these. <laughs> yeah. Spending too much time on true social. But he goes, in short, perhaps we should stop making comments about other people's bodies. And, and but they're in their opinion, they use 50 cent as evidence that he even thinks this. And he legitimately says the opposite thing of you. <laughs> So I just thought that was one of the funniest things in the world. <laughs> the, you know, and the thing with 50 Cent is he will go lose the weight despite these people. He might. He gets jacked every now and then, yeah. I guarantee you that He's next, a big boy, though. He is a big boy, and he's got a big frame. I guarantee you next time you see 50 Cent, he'll, he'll be uh, ripped again. He's going to have to lose a couple after this debacle. Yeah. Because and he, he was, will. And the fact that he's kind of putting himself out there to say like straight up like, and they used the, they used evidence where they would go, you know, he's even had a problematic history, but uh, where he called Madonna ugly one time, but you know he's apologized for that. And now he realizes, and you go, that's not what's happening. No, he's he makes fun of people nonstop, and he goes, the, the, you know, the thing there was a another viral meme of a guy. He goes, um, I, I lost four hundred pounds after my best friend called me fat fuck on my text every day for four months. Yeah, and that was what he said, and. So uh, it's just funny. I'm sure his think. friends are calling him Lizzo as a joke and he'll lose the weight. Like he just needs yeah. to be called Lizzo by his friends like 20 times. Okay. Well, and then... the last thing I wanted to say before we, uh, uh, we get out of here is one still not caught COVID. It might go down to how, on a, how attractive you are. Scientists say mm -hmm. so, but yes, they did this. Well, big that's study. why I've got COVID 44 times. Yeah. And that's why I retroactively have not got COVID. Well, th obviously that, that me is just funny that they wrote this article and all they did was essentially healthy people are better looking <laughs> you know yeah so yeah yeah if you're if you're jacked you are less like again and then they go look all these people that are better looking and you go well, yeah what happened it's like <laughs> they weren't fat yeah so hey, that people silly. on rascal scooters more likely to get covid and die from it yeah yeah, yeah exactly right? this is actually we don't the, know the correlation i didn't want to reference this earlier but when i said when you become a scientist is this the kind of stuff you think you're getting into no that's <laughs> this, this that's a the, better one yeah this is the other one the, that's a better one is this the science i signed up for i don't know i don't i, I think this is a better one because you're right this is what would you uh, use this for? This is a science fair project right here. <laughs> yeah. This is an eighth grade science fair project. Like a dude being a dude brings it in and he goes, uh, I ranked the girls in the class who got COVID the like, like, like he's, hottest, he's in the a least meeting hot. at his like think tank and he brings in the Bristol board and it's crudely <laughs> glued and he says, Look, if you're more likely and it's <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly what it is. This is a science. And so our friend sent us this, but they did, okay, Cupid did this big thing about how men and women rate each other. <laughs> yeah. And it was pretty wild. So basically, women rank men as a whole way, way lower than men rank women. So women would were putting, when they go least attractive, they were putting, you know, 30% of men in not attractive at all category, whereas men were putting, you know, Almost no women. And that's what I always kind of say. If I'm ranking girls one to 10, I almost never say a two. You have to be really like, I mean, you know, morbidly it, well, obese if I say a two. Well, like I think, if a girl's like below average, I say a six, you know? For sure. I mean, there's, yeah, there's really no such thing as a two. I, I agree with you. Nobody's a two. But that's not how they see it. Girls think that they well, have a very think, high standard of themselves. Yeah. So it kind of has to do with what uh, Chris was saying last week where the they 80, go. 20. Yeah, girls see 35% of men. They go, oh, that guy is not hot. And men will basically not do that. But they, they're, they're really feeling themselves, these women lately. Yeah. Also, there's <laughs> They more, think their shit don't stink. For sure. Also, <laughs> women use more variables to make this decision than men. Okay. Men purely go off of a picture to rank people. Depends how hungry they are, how they do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, like men purely, they just, it's a straight picture. And, you know, because they're just trying to, like, they only think of a woman as, like, for sex. And then women can't help 
help but think of when they see a photo of a man, like, oh, what's like the providing element of this and all that stuff. That so, so when you really force them to strictly go sex, yeah, they will be like that super narrow thing. Yeah. That, that makes sense. Well, thank you everyone for tuning in. Thanks to all the cast. scientists who give us all this. Thanks to all the scientists. Content. And, uh, uh, one interesting one thing we're gonna do is for this episode of the Patreon, uh, our boy JJ Lieberman, the craziest man in the world, has moved to New York, so he's he gonna ca- be, he called into Low Value Mail last night. Yeah, and we're, we're he's gonna be on the Patreon episode, patreoncom slash cast, New bonus episode every week. So the biggest thing you could do is leave us a review on iTunes, join the Patreon, or just tell a friend that they should check out the podcast. All of those things super helpful. Commenting, subscribing, all that stuff absolutely so, and right. also march 10th uh, i'm recording my stand-up special make sure Brooklyn you come comedy out. club yeah. help danny uh, sell some tickets yeah come out if you're around it'll be fun time march 10th brooklyn comedy club i'll be out and we'll be having drinks and hanging and stuff yeah, yeah, too, yeah, so. yeah. okay peace